talking about building strength of mind, our faith, which is more commonly known as building inspiration. The Buddha taught 84,000 Dhamma teachings. That's not small at all. And if we were born in the time of the Buddha, met the Buddha, and listened to the Dhamma, we would be determined to practice, to build goodness, and to know and see the Dhamma, and have become a Sodapanna, stream enterer, or arahant, or be firmly established in the triple gem. And we see that there were many people who had met the Buddha, but there were those of them who weren't interested in the Dhamma. They had strong views and were conceited. They saw themselves as a big teacher, and so did not meet with goodness. Even though they were born in the time of the Buddha, they were still far away. But on the other hand, we were born at this time and are not in time to meet the physical body of the Buddha. But the Buddha had left us the Dhamma, which he had taught 84,000 Dhamma teachings, and the important core of it is being diligent, being heedful. The Buddha instructed us in his final teaching to be diligent, bring about success through being diligent. Those who are diligent are those who have wisdom. Venerable Ajahn Chah taught that how are we people heedless, negligent? They are compared to someone who has died already. And we know what a dead person is like. The dead person does not breathe. They can't move around or go here or there. He taught of the dead person who is still breathing, who is still moving around here and there but they aren't interested in goodness, and so this is called a negligent person. And if negligent at the age of a child, then they aren't interested in studying and learning. They don't progress to have knowledge, and when they grow up it will be difficult, because they won't make it. They will have problems with their livelihood. And without wisdom, they may get pulled easily. They go down to the paths of decline, Ultimately, they make mistakes. They may steal, rob, be corrupt, or take drugs. And then this life is finished, because of being negligent and having no wisdom, and because of not being close to wise people. They themselves are not wise, they are a fool, and then they add to it by associating with other fools. It then goes even worse. So we need to have wisdom, to contemplate how to progress ourselves to be able to succeed in our studies and work. So it's not that we have a dream or build a castle in the sky, having just a wild dream, having disorderly thoughts, but taking no action. We need to set a goal in our lives and to build our inspiration to be able to achieve that goal. We can see many children having big dreams when you get older, what do you want to do? Do you want to be a sports player, maybe in football, at the level where it is an occupation, being world class, or to be a designer? There are many occupations that need a dream to make come true, and you have to be diligent to get to that point. And there is no need to be excellent in everything. Just being excellent in one thing or another is fine so that it can be an occupation that can support your life and family. And here, if a child has merit, they will have their mother and father. The parents will pull them or teach them, or find skillful methods to support them, so that their child will get to their goal. The parents will make the child associate with friends that have knowledge and skill, protecting their child falling to a group of friends that pull their child to paths of ruin. The parents will nurture the child to have determination in the knowledges. Then poor learning will improve. They will have more diligence, and at the least they will be one in the group of children who gain success in studies. And then later they will progress to have more excellent knowledge and skills. So building inspiration in study, one must be diligent as well. 
we have to be aware that these days we are constantly receiving many types of media over the span of a day. We have to know what is appropriate to receive. We stop receiving the information or messages that have a negative impact on our building of good inspiration. Receiving a lot of bad information and media makes us in a mess. It has no benefit to us. It's a waste of time, so we must try to give it up. Why? Because we people, if we don't set a goal, then we will just drift around. So we set a goal, and we also need to manage our time as well, not letting time go to waste, with no benefit. Here, who we associate with is important. We have contact and mix with groups who think positively. Then they will pull our minds and hearts to get better. But if we contact with people who think negatively and badly, then later our inspiration can drop. We should be well apart from them too. Sometimes we may have good thoughts come up, so we should quickly write it down, and we take it to contemplate. Find a way to progress that good thought to be better. So in conclusion, we ourselves are our own refuge. And this is what the Buddha taught. No matter what our parents, relatives or friends advise us, if we don't do it, we aren't determined in it, then we won't succeed. We need to have confidence in ourselves, we have a clear goal of achieving success. And we tend to have, what do we call it? We have idols. Those who have succeeded in studies, in work or in bhavana, mental cultivation, which is also a type of inspiration. This person can sit meditation for one hour, but we sit meditation for just 10 minutes and we are already shifting here and there. We can see that that person can sit and we gain inspiration in training and practicing. And ultimately we are able to sit for one hour, or for two hours, or three hours, we can do it. It is dependent on our inspiration. There are some monks who can sit meditation 9 hours in a day, or 8 or 10 hours. But we aren't able to sit meditation 1 hour, so let us just die then. This then builds our inspiration, we become aware of it. And sometimes we make mistakes, and so we learn to overcome those mistakes. We try and see that they are a person, and we are a person as well. We have 32 parts of our body the same, so why can't we do it? If we see the benefit of training in something, then we will be able to do it. In studies, in work, in bhavana, it's all the same. We can make it succeed. But those who set their hearts and mind set a satcha aditana, a vow of truth, to meet a Sama Sambuddha, a perfectly self-awakened Buddha, a Pacheka Buddha, a solitary Buddha, to meet the Dhamma, to meet the Sangha, an Arahant, that is our supreme support. And then they can meet a Sama Sambuddha, an Arahant, and succeed in attaining to the path and fruits of Nibbana, and be firmly established in the Triple Gem. So even though we have come into this era, May we determine that we have been born already and we haven't yet attained success in the practice. So may we meet with the Buddha, meet with the Dhamma, meet with the Sangha, the Arahants, the Sawakas, the noble disciples of the Buddha. May we have faith directed and firm to the Triple Gem. We establish our vow and are determined. So we will then meet with goodness. The Buddha compared diligence to the dewdrop on a blade of grass that has been shone on by the morning sun and will dry up and vanish very quickly. Like our age, 40 or 50 years have passed already. Or what Mapjan this year, on the 28th November, is the 38th year anniversary. It's so quick, very quick. It passed by in a flash and it's already coming to the 38th year anniversary. Our lives have already passed by 50 years, 60 years, 70 years, 80 years. It's not long at all. 
and we won't be in this world for long. We have to go on. We are one who has come into this world for a short time only. But if we are diligent and we have wisdom, then we will be able to meet with goodness. So we must set our foundation first, because the Buddha taught that we have suffering waiting up ahead of us. I have one story to tell you of a person that I personally know. He had a good job and income. He lived in a materially developed country. He had a high education as well and graduated with a master's degree. He had a wife, had a house and lovely pets. But the important thing was his health. One day his health got worse and worse until one day he couldn't work anymore. He had to quit his job. His plan was that he was going to have a child, a son, but he couldn't anymore because his body was not strong. He saw a doctor to diagnose his sickness, to find the cause of his illness. But the doctor didn't know what it was caused from, and he also didn't know when he would recover from his sickness. Here, so what was he to do? He had lost hope. He had no more hope in his life. But his wife was really good. She had a lot of metta, goodwill and compassion. She nursed after his sickness well. But he thought that, if it's like this, he would be troubled in the future, and his wife would be troubled too, and he wouldn't be able to find true happiness. But he was someone who had wisdom. Someone without wisdom may look for another way out. Or the one who is nursing the sick for a long time may lose their motivation to nurse them, and look for another way out, which would be breaking sila dhamma, morality. But this man that I knew, he had wisdom. He probably had past spiritual qualities. Sometimes one needs to have this level of suffering in order to find the way out. He was determined to find true happiness, to free himself from suffering. Because this body is a heap of suffering. If it doesn't eat, doesn't drink, doesn't sleep, doesn't exercise, it's just suffering, it's suffering. Sitting for a long time, walking for a long time, standing for a long time, it's all suffering. But we change our posture so we don't see suffering. The posture hides suffering. So he was determined to find the knowledge to free his heart from suffering. He had faith. He established a Satcha Aditana to the Buddha Dhamma Sangha, and to the Parama Bodhisattvas, those who are building Parami, spiritual perfections, to become a Samasambuddha, that may he have a strong body. He made this Aditana, and he felt that his body got stronger. This is a result of goodness as well, from practicing Nekama Parami, the perfection of renunciation. And later on it was miraculous that he met one doctor. The doctor was one who could aditana the parami of a parama bodhisattva that was building parami to be a samasambuddha. And the painful feelings of his was all gone. And so he had the opportunity to ordain and to learn and practice the Dhamma. So can we see that if we are diligent, heedful, and we see suffering, we see the dangers, and we have wisdom, then sometimes we can make an aditana parami and we can succeed, if we have sufficient merit. So may you all set your hearts on this. (laughs) 